welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this maxi skirt. For reference, I wear a size medium slash large and I used about 400 grams of this weight three yarn, but you can use any size yarn if you want. Um, I use a 4.5 millimeter hook and a 3.0 and then you're going to need scissors and stitch markers and a darning needle. First, we're going to start off with our waistband and you want it to be three to four inches smaller than your waist because the more you wear your skirt, it's going to stretch. So you don't want it to be too big. So you're just going to chain that. So mine came up to around 31 inches. So the key point is to make sure it's smaller than your actual waist because it is going to stretch, like I said. And yeah, you don't have to use a tape measure. You can just wrap it around your waist. Now we're going to start on our pattern. And basically it's just front and back posts, but alternating using a double crochet. So row one you're going to put a double crochet into the third stitch from the hook and then we're going to be putting one double crochet into each stitch all the way until the end Okay, this is what your first row should be looking like so far. Now you're going to chain two and turn your work and now we're going to be working in the front and back posts. We're going to start off with our front posts and I'm just going to let you guys watch. But if you get lost and confused, I'm going to have some videos linked in the description explaining more in detail. So we're just alternating between the front and back posts and we're going to repeat this all the way until we get to the end of the row. And as you can probably tell, the back posts are the ones that's in the back and then the front posts are the raised ones that's in the front. And that's how you're able to tell the difference.
So I'm coming up on the last one. You don't want to forget that one because it's going to be noticeable. But I'm just going to go. Actually, I have two more left. So that one was a back post. And the last one is going to be a front post. Okay, it should be looking something like this. And we're going to just keep repeating the same exact row until we get the thickness of our band. So you're going to chain two, turn your work. And if you started with the front post like I did, you're going to put the front post on top of the front post because that's going to create that ribbing effect. And then you're going to put the back post on top of the back post. And I wanted a more thicker band, so mine measured out to be three and a half inches. So you can make yours thicker if you want, skinnier. So once you've reached your desired width, what I'm going to do now is slip stitch across the side so my hook and yarn can end up on that end of our waistband, which I want to explain in a few as to why I did that. Because I want that foundation chain that we did in the beginning to be at the top where my waist is because it's going to be really hard for that part to stretch once it goes over your thighs and hips. So I'm just going to slip stitch across evenly until I reach the end of that side. So once you've reached the end, now we're going to connect both.
And once you reach the end, I like to chain two to fasten off and leave a tail that we're gonna weave in at the end. And you can decide on whether you wanna keep it inside out or leave it the way it is. Um, it looks good both ways, so it doesn't matter. So now when we start working on the bottom of the skirt, the stretchier part is going to be towards the hip part and the tighter part, which is the foundation row, is going to be towards your waist. Now we're going to start working on our granny squares. So first you're going to start off with a magic circle. Then we're going to put a double crochet and make sure you're crocheting over that small piece of yarn also. And this is going to be considered your first cluster. Now we're going to chain two. Now we're going to group two double crochets together. So watch closely. So you're going to do the regular one, pull through two. Don't go into that last two. And now you're going to do the next double crochet and then pull through two again. And now we have two grouped together and then pull through three. And this is your second cluster. So you're gonna repeat this until you have eight total clusters all together. And I'll also link another tutorial on this that explains it a little bit more in detail. And as far as how many squares you should do, it depends on a few things, the width of your hips, thighs. So you're gonna make a few and then measure it on your body and then decide if you need to make more because i originally did 16 i believe and then i ended up having to do more and i did these squares to cover the butt part because i didn't want that part to be as see-through So once you've did eight clusters, you're going to pull the yarn tight to close the magic circle, chain two, and then slip stitch it into that first double crochet we made at the beginning. Okay, so now we're moving on to round two. You're gonna slip stitch into that next stitch right next to it. Chain two, and this is gonna count as your first double crochet. And now we're gonna do two double crochets together. And this is gonna be your first cluster of three. And because this is a corner stitch, you're gonna chain two and then put three clusters back into that same space. Now we're gonna chain two, and we're gonna put three double crochets into that chain two space. Now we're going to chain two and we're coming up on our next corner. So we're going to crochet three double crochets together, chain two, and then another set of double crochets together back all into that same space.
Our second corner is complete, so we're going to chain two again and put three double crochets into the next chain two space. Okay, so now we are going to chain two and we reach our third corner. So we're going to put two clusters in this corner. So we're going to group three double crochets together again, chain two, and then group another three. And that is our corner. As you probably can tell, it's starting to get repetitive. So you're just going to repeat the same thing we've been doing until you reach the end of this round. So we reached the end of our round. So to finish it off, you're going to chain two and slip stitch it into that first cluster we made at the beginning. Moving on to round three, we're going to slip stitch over to that next stitch and this is how we're going to start all of our rounds. Then we're going to chain two, that's going to count as your first double crochet. And then we're going to group two double crochets together to equal a cluster. And this is a corner piece, so we're going to chain two and put another cluster into that same space. Okay, so now we're going to chain two and into that next chain two space, we're going to put two double crochets this round. And into the next three stitches, we're going to put one double crochet into each one. Okay, then we're going to put two double crochets into the next space. And now we're at a corner again, so chain two and put two clusters of three double crochets, crochet together all into the same space, dividing each cluster with a chain two.
Okay, so now we're gonna chain two again and then put two double crochets into that next space. Then put one double crochet into each of the three stitches. You're going to repeat this pattern until the end of the round. Moving on to round four, we're going to start it off the same way as round three. Instead of putting only three double crochets, you're going to put seven double crochets into all of the seven stitches.
Okay, then we're gonna put two double crochets into that next space. You're gonna chain two and now we reached another corner but you're basically going to be repeating this pattern for the entire round This is what four rounds look like, and we're gonna do two more rounds. And it's the same exact pattern, except for when you get to the sides, you're just gonna add more double crochets.
And what I did was weave in all the ends as I went so I didn't have a whole bunch of ends at the end. But you want to make sure your ends are weaved in pretty good because you don't want your ends to unravel when you're wearing your skirt. I did 27 squares in total, so three rows of nine squares. But I'm going to show you guys how I position my squares so you can see how much squares you need to do. And I did block all of my squares because it just helps it look better and more complete. But if you don't have a blocking board, you can use a cardboard box, um, other boards. It doesn't have to be a blocking board. Now I'm just positioning my squares and you want the squares to cover your butt and that can either be two rows, three rows. For me, it was three rows and I also had to make more squares. So when you put them together, you're going to see if you need to make more or not.
Okay, we're going to start connecting them by slip stitching them together and make sure they're both inside out. Also make sure you're attaching the squares at the same position. And when you reach the spaces, I put two slip stitches into those. But you're going to slip stitch all the way down. And once you've reached the end to tie off, I like to chain two and then you're going to leave a tail so you can weave in later. You're going to keep repeating this until your squares can wrap around your hips and the tighter they are, the less squares you need. If you want your skirt to fit looser, then add an extra square. And make sure your squares are all facing the same direction. So all the bad sides on the bad side and all the good sides on the good side. But I repeated this until I had nine squares in total for the first row, but I ended up doing two more rows. So I have three rows of nine squares. You might need more or you might need less, but just keep trying it on and adjust accordingly.
So after connecting a few squares, I decided to try it on. And as you can see, it's too small, so I have to add some more. After I finished that first row of squares, I decided to start weaving in some of those ends so I'm not overwhelmed at the end and I highly recommend doing
you've connected all of your squares vertically, now it's time to connect them horizontally. And I'm still connecting them by using slip stitches and you just want to make sure your squares are facing the right way when doing this. Okay, I'm trying it on again and once I tried it on, this is when I realized I needed to make three more because this technically could fit, but I didn't want my skirt to fit snug. So if you're the same way, then add extra squares. Okay, so after everything is connected horizontally, I weaved in all the ends, and now we're gonna connect the last two ends together. And we're gonna do it the same way by using slip stitches again, and make sure it's flipped inside out when you're doing this.
Okay, so once everything is connected, I'm just gonna add like a little border to make it look more put together. Okay, so now I'm gonna attach a new yarn and we're gonna put single crochets all the way around and there's no specific way, just make sure they're placed evenly. All right, so once you reach back to the beginning, you're gonna slip stitch it into that first stitch you made at the beginning. And for the next row, we're gonna chain one and we're gonna put half double crochets into each stitch all the way around. Okay, we're gonna finish it off the same exact way by slip stitching it into that first stitch we made at the beginning. And we're gonna repeat this two more times. Now we're coming up on our last stitch. So now we're ready to decrease because it's way too wide. It's gonna fall off. So yeah, we're gonna do one round of decreasing. 
I experimented and did two rounds, but it ended up being too small. It wasn't able to fit over my thighs. So we're going to stick with one round and I'm going to show you how to attach it to the ribbing after. So to decrease, you're going to start off by chaining one and you're going to insert into that first stitch, pull up a loop, insert into the next stitch, and then pull through all three. And I know that was kind of fast, but I want to slow it down. But you're basically going to repeat this all the way around. And once you get back to the beginning, be sure to slip stitch it into that first stitch. So now we're ready to attach our ribbing. And because our skirt has more stitches than our waistband, we're going to have to go into our stitches that's on our skirt more than one time. I hope that makes sense. But we're slip stitching it, or not slip stitching it, we're single crocheting it together and you want to make sure you're going through both loops on both the skirt and the waistband
And once you reach the end, I like to chain two and fasten off and leave a long tail because you're going to weave that in later. Now we're going to work on the length of the skirt and when you're attaching your yarn make sure it's attached to the back part because this is going to be where your seam is. It's mostly hidden but I like to put it in the back and I forgot to do it on this one. Once you attach your yarn you want to chain one and put single crochets all the way around and make sure they're placed evenly. Okay, so I made it back to the beginning. I wanna finish off the row by slip stitching it. And for the next two rows, I'm gonna do half double crochets into each stitch. Now the rest of the pattern is just going to be triple crochets so I'm going to chain three and put one triple crochet into each stitch and you're going to do this until you reach your desired length so no increases no decreases.
be sure to tag me on Instagram if you made this maxi skirt. And yeah, I would love to see how yours turned out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.